Hey, John here. Just finishing up the last of these uh, bodge wires here to uh, make the uh, version zero of the VDP uh, retro board here uh, functional. I transplanted the parts from the breadboard that I was using to experiment with the video output driver over here uh, onto the board as well. So there's enough footprints to uh, put those in. I'm going to update the schematic so that this uh, it reflects this as built when I go over to revision one. Now, I'm not going to go ahead and do the revision one until I verify that everything else is okay, which means I'm going to make sure that all the RAM works and this decoder is connected right and these uh, buffers allow me to read the joystick values. Once I've done all that verify and the interrupts over here too, right? I got to also do that. There's a diode and a and a uh, header here to allow me to run uh, interrupts from here into the retro board. Once all this is known to be working or, or tweaked and fixed as needed, I can move on to update the schematic and tweak any board routings that need to be done, like adding the bypass capacitors for these uh, buffers here. And then I can order up a Rev1 board. I'm pretty confident that the only real problem here is, other than the missing bypass, is going to be the power screw up on the darn D-Rams. So let's see how this thing goes. I'm sure this would have been much nicer had I connected the darn pins right in the first place, right? <laughs> Oh, that one's now bent in. It's not going to want to go in that way. There we go. I want to short it out in a different way this time. No, thank you. And now this other pin is reaching over and playing with the uh, VDP chip over there. So we got to make sure these stay behave. Come on, get out of there. There we go. All right, you can see that one is now in a reasonable place. This one up here is also between these two sockets. You can kind of get a screwdriver in there if you have to. Make sure that it doesn't reach over and hit here, which actually in this case, it wouldn't be the worst thing because this happens to also be grounded as well. So I'm not gonna worry so much about that. But normally you would really wanna be careful about that one. This one here we need to be careful about because this is, five volts and this one here is not five volts so you need to make sure those don't touch All right we were good last time get a little screwdriver in there guide it away from the other socket sit down in there okay i think we're good These DRAMs will probably be retired after this. I mean, they were powered backwards. I'm not going to put them in anything that I'm going to rely on. But I suspect they're going to be okay. If they survived it, they'll probably be all right. I guess there's the benefit of having a, a decent uh, USB power supply that has short circuit protection. So this is the one that I've got. I bought them on, on Amazon. To me, these are just some cheapy chargers here. So that's what I've got here. It's a USB. It's supposed to be USB-C, you know, three amps. That's what this thing supposedly means. And uh, with short circuit protection, it probably says, you know, once I get up to, to too high of a current, it'll immediately shut down. This is probably the only reason these things are protected. In the old days... When we had analog regulators, those things just forced the full current out of them all the time if there was a short. And, I mean, my experience has always been that everything catches on fire uh, when they're shorted out. I, I've never had such a, 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 a graceful failure <laughs> in my life here. All right, so I put the uh, parts in here from the breadboard, and I got the other DRAM in there. Let's go ahead and power this thing up, make sure nothing bad's going on before we play around with these other sockets and stuff. One step at a time. All my leads are trimmed okay, yeah. Make sure all the pins line up. That's like my biggest paranoid. One of these days, I'm going to do this wrong. 
without thinking about it, and that'll be the end of that. So be careful. Okay, so this should not mean anything changed. I just moved everything onto the board. Plug it in and hope the lights come on. Yes, they do. And they flicker just the way they're supposed to. And Minicom says what it's supposed to say. Let's go ahead and bring up the video capture. Now we should have the uh, mode one test program we left on here from last time. And that left random stuff on the screen. And the last time we had a pattern, it did not look unlike this. But it had like every other line had a gap in it. Now this is still just random data. This doesn't mean that both RAMs are working. What it does mean is that nothing's on fire. <laughs> So this makes me feel kind of good here. Uh, last time we ran it, we ran the DRAM test, then we ran mode one. And the thing that makes me think this is interesting is that we filled it up with a few byte values. Now this is actually like written as a loop, oops. And then it goes back to 100. If we ran this at full speed, I'm looking ahead here a little bit. You can't just read in one right after another like this. Because the VDP chip has to have a relaxation time between each one of these operations. Now, I don't think we could go this fast. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and run it by tracing it rather than just running it and then return back to the OS. And we can actually say, like, trace, I don't know how many instructions there were. What does it do? List up eight at a time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven, huh? Yeah, that's a weird thing. Eleven, twenty-two. Let's just trace twenty-two instructions. And if it prints everything out, it's going so unbelievably slow, it will be relatively safe. All right, so we wrote into the DRAM. <laughs> and then we went around even further. Uh, I missed counted, I guess. Anyway, um, we read, wrote out, read back in, and you can see the one, one, two, two, three, three came back. Oh, that does suggest both DRAMs are working because last time it was just oh, 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 one, oh, two, oh, three. So this strongly suggests that both DRAMs are working, at least for a couple of bytes worth of data. So this is a very positive test. Uh, before I spend a lot of time playing around with the board, though, what I really want to do is make sure that the joystick ports work and just get all the all the hardware stuff tested so that I can come back over here, do the as-built schematic, push it up to GitHub, reroute the board so everybody that wants to play along at home can, so I can release Gerber's uh, now uh, and uh, not get so far ahead that nobody else can play, right? I'm looking for a lot of con you know, collaboration here. I've never written programs for uh, one of these chips before, and, and I'm sure there's many experts out there that can have an awful lot of uh, very good opinions and contributions. So I'm really looking forward to the discussion that's going to take place here. So to that end, let's go back to the bench, get some more chips installed. Fortunately, I have this bag of just tons of sockets that have been lying around. Literally, these have been around my basement literally for like over 30 years. And uh, so I fished out a couple of par uh, sockets that look like they'll fit. And we can pop them in here. <laughs> some of these look like they've got some solder on some of the leads that have been recycled. <laughs> so these are perfect for this kind of use here. Right, so let's put this in there. First thing I want to do is test this other decoder. I assume it's going to be all right, but <laughs> I also assumed that my DRAM was going to be okay. Uh, I got to hold that in there somehow. Hmm. Let's set it on this, maybe. Well, it's sort of working. I need three more hands now. This here, maybe I could put some bug rugs under there to keep it. Here you go. And 
start with Kenny Corners. I can check that the thing is seated correctly, because this, who knows. Uh, okay, that looks pretty good to me. Certainly good enough. Okay. Well, gall darn, that's lucky. I got these left over from the retro board. I got a single 138. Why would I only buy one of these? I, I usually buy like two or three because I expect to burn one of them up. <laughs> and I got some HCT 244s, which should do fine for what we need to do here, especially for testing this thing out. I think we're going to be good. So let's first test out the 138. It's kind of hard to get things in here at this point. Ooh, it's getting cramped in there. All these pins and jacks sticking out all over the place. All right, so this is all we really need to test it because I can then come over here and check the output enable pins and write a little simple test app to do some read input operations on the correct port numbers and see if the scope pulses. Which would be nice. Smoke test. LEDs are on, that's a good sign. It's not gonna be shorting out if the LEDs come on. This time what we want to do is run up DDT and all we, oops, I don't want to do that. I want to go over here and I want to enable these buffers. So this is read a B, a 8 and A9 that comes off of this. So this is the chip I just plugged in right now, A8 and A9, that's pins 15 and 14. If I want to probe it off the 138 direct or I can just go over to pin 1 on either of the two 244s, which seems to be a bigger target. So I want to read from A9 and A8. So I can just simply say A100, input from A9, input from A8. And then I can say, well, why don't we go ahead and return? And then what would happen is this is going to read from both ports and then return to the OS if we run it at the command line. If I simply trace it like this, it'll just read from whatever single port that I'm doing the trace on. So we can check them both or just one. To test this, I'm gonna clip my scope ground over here. I gotta keep the probe out of the way so I don't short anything out. Then I'm gonna use a header that's like this. I'm gonna poke the pins in the hole here. Well, power's on, so I got to be careful here. So as long as I keep a little mild sideways pressure on this, it'll make good electrical contact. Certainly good enough to get the scope on there. So I'm clipped on a pin one, a U6. I can go back to, to trace the uh, input operation and see what we get on the scope. We definitely have a nice select signal on that. Okay, how about the other one? U7, and that I'm going to do an input on A9, and that looks good. So I'm going to power this down, socket this up, and then I, I'm not going to waste these DB. Now, these things are expensive, so I'll, I'm going to play the same game I am with this header here. I'll go ahead and socket these, put those in. I don't even need to put the pull-up resistors. These are TTL inputs, so they're probably going to see the signals as high if they're floating and I can then put this in and kind of give it a little bit of a tilt and hope it does some mechanical contact plug in a joystick and we'll see if it's working if that's the case then I'm ready to come up with the rev one version on the board layout the pins a little bit crooked here that's what I get for recycling sockets from the 80s. <laughs> Come on. Wait, that really doesn't want to go in there. Oh, I got like 
couple of pins are bent a little bit. There we go. That's what I get for keeping them in a bag for 25. Oh, geez, there's another pin over here that's really out of one go. <laughs> that one need a little coaxing. This one also is a little bent up. See, hard to see with the way that metal shines here that due to the way these are manufactured. Hopefully that will be a little easier to get in there. This too has some solder on a couple of the pins, which might, yeah, let's see if I can heat this up. Okay, those look pretty good. Now watch them fall out before I get a chance. They're actually under some uh, pressure and stress in there due to their bent pins, so they probably won't fall out, but let's get them tacked in. This one here doesn't look quite right. There you go. It looks a little better now. That actually seems okay. All right. Not too bad if this goes. Now, these are brand new. They're HCT, but they'll do for our needs. They should be fine. Boy. Well, these are like moss out and TTL in. Uh-oh. You see how that's bent around on there a little bit like that? Right up in there? That might be ready to accordion, like I was talking about in my other video. I'm going to take this out and try and pre-bend these a little bit better. That's a pretty sloppy job. <laughs> you don't want to do that. Oh, these pins are looking pretty tarnished. Kind of a brown tint to these things. What's a date code on these? These are brand new. I just got them from DigiKey. It says 07021. Texas Instruments. Hmm. Well, I'm guessing it's okay. I don't think I have ever had a single bad experience with DigiKey. Is anyone? Is that a thing? These are just bought recently. Oh, that's 21 Sep 2021. This I bought. I must have bought these when I was first starting the retro. <laughs> All right, let's bend these ones over too. That one went a little smoother. Yeah, good to, good to pre-straighten those suckers, right? Okay, so this is going to end up going in here. Oh, I got a bunch of these. I could probably... Well, I can, it feels pretty good. If I actually just bend it a little bit like that, it feels like it's going to come in contact there. So maybe this is the way to go. You know, I don't know. Eh, we'll see. So here's my Atari compatible joystick with a DB9 end on it like this. So I'm going to go ahead and hook this up and wiggle it around like that. And put a little pressure on here, hoping that these nine pins will stay in contact. Won't be the most reliable, but it'll be worth a try. So I'm plugged into J4. Now we need to write a loop that just simply keeps on inputting from, I think this is U7, I think that's A9, port A9. And just watch the hex value when I move around the joystick. That's all we got to do. Smoke test. Not bad. Looking good. All right, what did I say? I'm in J4. J4 it goes to A9, blah, 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 blah. So those are all, these are named after the uh, bit positions and the port that I'm supposed to read. So that's A9, bit 5, and so on. So all these go here, which maxes this. So if I just read from A9 in a loop, 
say jump to 100. Oops, if I actually remember, how many times I got to do this wrong? <laughs> no, it's JMP for 8080 mnemonics. Okay, so I just like trace like a thousand. This thing will just keep going and keep reading. So what does it got? It's got A of zero, zero. That's not a good sign because it should be FF. Hmm. Maybe an HCT wants a pull up on there. Well, what we can do, I mean, I, well, I could just stick one of those sips in there and do the same game, angle it a little. Those are just so expensive, I don't want to waste those. Okay, with the uh, sip in there, you can clearly see we're now reading FF, so that, that helped. Let's see if I get the joystick. Let's fire it up again. Let it go for a while. Push the joystick forward and around. It's not doing anything. Probably because the DB9 needs a little more contact. So when I tip up the DB9 and kind of play around with the joystick, clearly you can see the values changing. If it all settles down and I hold everything still and just gently press the fire button, you can see that it leaves us with FA. Now, that's a weird value because if we have eight bits, that means that more than one bit was low. It may also be that the, you know, we're not coming in good contact with the SIP, but I think it's working, right? So, uh, where's the fire button on an Atari joystick? <laughs> well, let's have a look. See, all right, here we go. Here's one. Uh, up, down, left, right, yada yada yada. Input trigger that would be pin six. Input paddle, touch. I'm pretty sure that that's the trigger. What's this one say? Button one, button two. Well. Six and seven are allegedly buttons. So I'm down here and pin six is A90. Well, that does promise somewhat well because that would mean it must be an even number if that's low. So I should get FE. And what I was getting was FA. Let me see if I can jostle things around a little bit. Maybe there's not making good contact. There we go. Button down, button up, button down, joystick down, joystick up, left, right. That, that looks like it's working here. If I fire and move the joystick, oh yeah, there you go. That's good. So there's one. Let me try the other one. So to test the other port, we say input, uh, what was it? Was it A8 or A6? What was the? A8. All righty. Make sure we're at 100. Try it again. Fire button down, up, left, right. That's awesome. Looking good. Now, what we should probably do is mark the schematic with the right pin numbers. This isn't going to be the first time I'm going to have to look this up. Okay, so what do we got? Pin 1 is up. Uh, I'm going to make some room here. Mm. Well, we can move these to the left. There we go. Get them out of the way. Then you can move this to the right. And I can get it back on the page. That leaves me some room for some text markings on there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put it in a line, but I'm going to put it over here, I guess. So what do we got? Pin 4 is right. I like it better when it's bold like that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put right. What's this one going to say? That's pin three is left. Uh, 
Oops. I forgot to put it on the... Oops. Darn it. Sometimes it's easier to just copy one of these and then edit it. <laughs> Come on. There we go. Copy. Well, that's supposed to be pin three, right? Pin three is left. Okay. Copy this one. Uh, we're on pin seven. Uh, that's five volts DC. That's... Uh-oh. Whoop-da-daisy. Did I screw that up? Uh-huh. I got it connected to pin five. Uh-oh. I moved around the joystick. It did what we wanted it to do in all directions. So this is strange. I'm just downloading random images here. I don't know. Up, down, left, right. Reserve pin 7. 5, 8 is ground. 9 is floating. What do I do? Over here I have 9 is grounded and 8 is grounded. And this one says 9 not connected, 8 is ground. So that seems fine. 7 is 5 volt, 5 is reserved, huh? Boy, did I flub this? Let's see what any other web page says. Do they all concur? But I screwed up. Ground 8 is not marked. 7 is a button. 6 is a button. Yeah, I... Oh, that's an MSX joypad. Oh. Uh, what does this one say? 7 is 5 volts. That's got an Atari logo on it, but I mean, I wonder if 7 is 5, 8 is ground, 9 is, what do we got? Oop. 7, the, oh boy. That is interesting. So I don't know what to make of this. Ha. Huh. Um, well, it says seven. What the heck? I don't know what I'm looking at here. Down left, right, fire, and ground. So they leave these three unmarked. Boy, boy, how did I... I'm very confused because I'm seeing values here. Hmm. Now, my joystick is very old. I got it, like, when I was in high school. So that's before, probably before uh, 1982. He says no connect, ground, no connect. Up, down, left, right. Six is supposed to be the fire button. Well, my fire button's definitely on six because I got an FE when I press it. But I had all the other directions did stuff too, so this is very strange. Well, what that really... Oh, I see what's going on here. I just don't ever see a change on that pin. It doesn't matter that I screwed that up, I guess. As long as I've got... What? Six. I got one, two, three, four, and six connected. One, two, three, four, 
and 6, I probably should not connect pin 7 if it's really tied up with, you know, supposed to be either no connected or, or a power line or something. The 5 volts, I believe, are for the paddles. Yeah, see, for the potentiometer. So 5, 9, and 7. 5, 9 is supposed to be a potentiometer input, and I've got that grounded. And 7 should be plus 5. What? What? Well, yeah. All right, so let's clean this thing up. I obviously I grabbed a bad example or something. I don't know what I'm doing here. Uh, I'm going to go up, down, left, right for pins 1, 2, 3, and 4, which seems to be the going uh, consensus. Pin 6 is the fire pin, and I believe those are the bits that we've been seeing so far. Pin 7 is supposed to be a no connect, so I'm going to leave that off of there. I'm going to delete that line, and I'm going to put an X on there. And what do we got here? The 9 and 5 are also supposed to be no connects, and yet I'm just hooking them up like a dingus to random things. Put a no connect on there, and 5 is also... Uh, for the potentiometers, I'm going to get rid of all this and put a no connect on there as well. Because if somebody plugs in the wrong thing, I could mess that up. Oops, I think I just flipped the jack upside down. <laughs> there we go. All right, so if we clean this thing up now, get the ground out of the way. Get this junk out of here. Put that where it belongs. Okay, now what do we got here? Let me tighten this up a little bit. A2 is where the left is supposed to. Well, we could put them right there. Oops. What's pin one? Pin one is supposed to be up. Oops. Pin two is down. And then we got left and right. So that's one, two, three, and four. That makes sense. And then six is supposed to be fire. All right, and I'll do the same thing for... This other one, we'll move it over to the left after we clean this up a little bit to match the other one. This is terrible. What was I thinking? No connect. No connect. Uh, seven is a no connect. Thank you, no thank you. Quit. With the ground. Supposed to be on there. Save that. Move these over to make it look nice and pretty. Now, are these the values I got? When I got FE, when I held down the fire button, that was everything was high except for the fire. That worked well. I probably have to run it again to make sure that we got what we want. Well, it's fire button. That's definitely right. If I press it and go up, I'm on A7. So that is the most significant bit becoming a zero when I push it up. Pushing it down, that should be bit number six. And it is left. That should be bit, what, number three for left? Oh, one, two, that's the third bit. Yes, that makes sense. And now we go to the right. We go to the right, we get DF. It should be like bit, what, five? 
right yeah okay there we go so it does work even though i've connected too many of the pins because the ones I screwed up are no connects anyway. <laughs> so, god darn, I got lucky on that one. <laughs> all right, so all I did is I removed a couple of labels in here. That's not a big deal. If I export this thing over then to the PC board, all it will do is disconnect those lines and show that I have wires going to where they're not supposed to be. B, I can unroute those traces. Is that all I need to do here? I believe so. Boy, the only thing I, you know, this is innocuous, but I'll clean it up anyway. But the only real mistake was the power on the darn DRAMs. Not bad. Usually I got, like, the wrong sockets in there, and the parts don't even fit. I consider this a success. Not happy, you know, not happy that it's broken. Yes, of course, but, you know, all things considered. Uh, what do I want to do? Oh, I got to annotate. Why am I annotating? Did I add parts? Actually, I haven't done this in a while. What I did is I did add parts over here. I added this 470 puff capacitor. That's probably what it wants to annotate. Yeah, and I'm not caring that much about what any of the component numbers are. I'm just letting it run. Now, on the board that I just put together, I don't have this 330, and I put the C11 in the in the um, in the footprint where the 330 where that 330 is. So, what I did is I stuck the capacitor in here because it had to go to ground anyway. It's in parallel with this anyhow, so that's just where I put it. So I think I'm going to lose the 10K, I'm going to lose the 330, and then I'm going to put in a part, a footprint for the uh, capacitor. And I'll come out even here. I think I would like to get longer footprints. I think I mentioned that before, because these are eighth watts, and I got quarter watts, and they don't really fit in here that well. So... That's good. All right, so let me go ahead and save this. If we import the modifications, it should gripe that I don't have a... Actually, I copied another one of the capacitors. Yeah, so this thinks it's the that, uh, um, that capacitor. Now, the one that I have is like a 1,000 volts, so it's physically very large. I could probably find a tiny one that would fit in this socket or in this uh, whatever the footprint that they gave me because all I did is copy like one of these other ones when I put that on there. So if I delete R4 um, and R2, and that'll go in there. And then I got to replace the footprints, right? Yeah. What else do I got to do in here? Uh, as it is right now, there should be shorts if I say, show me what's going on, and it says, run the DRC. Go ahead and refill it. Too close to pad. These are going to be the two tracks that are not supposed to be there. Yeah, they're going to be close to the pad, all right. Uh, <laughs> see, this one's supposed to be a no connect. The A81 and the A91, these are going to be the ones that I... Uh, that I removed from the design, right? Yeah, they're not in here anymore. That used to be on pin, I guess, I don't know, seven or something. What pin is it going on to here? Yeah, okay. So what you can do here is you can click it, and I think I can hit uh, U, which should highlight and select the entire trace, but not the entire net, because I do not want to delete the uh, track that goes over to the pull-up resistor and then over here to this header. So I want to hit that and delete it and do the same thing over here. Hit U to select the whole track or the track between the two major endpoints, okay, without going to the whole net again. Same thing, right? So if I delete that, it goes away there. I can hit uh, what a B to report the uh, 
polygons. Can rerun this here. It should gripe that the capacitor is not hooked up. Actually, it would be under the <laughs> not yet connected. Okay. Close, and there should be some complaining about this. Oh, you know, it would be nice if C11 was anywhere near the board. Thank you very much. So I think we're pretty good. Last time I fixed my... <clears throat> uh, yeah. We don't want to talk about that anymore. Okay, not bad. Well, let's clean up the uh, parts I don't want to mess with over here, like this thing. I'm going to delete this. So for now, we can mess around with it. Let's go over here and see if we can find a better footprint. So currently, it's one of these that says, uh, whatever, we got a 1.6 millimeter diameter and a 5.8 millimeter between here and there. So if you go down here to like the 762, we might be able to fit a better resistor in there. Let me save this, go over here, import the mods, close this down. Now, where did it go? So now it's much bigger. And uh, there's the, oops. And use the arrow key. Well, I should set the grid because it's super fine. Let's bring it up to 0.1 millimeters, maybe. I don't remember what the grid was before. But what I was thinking is I could do something like this. So if I do that, uh, that gives me the whole, I mean, look at it, this relatively speaking, so like an eyeball. If I put a regular quarter watt in there, would it fit? Maybe we should look at something that's a little bit longer. I, quarter watt, that's going to be really tight. Uh, what do we got here? We got, uh, 10. That's much bigger, but also looks like it's going to give you more room for the diameter of the thing, which means we're going to lose some space on our board. So what do we got here? That's the seven. This is the same distance as this one up here. So that's of no value. This is starting to get more interesting. So that's 10. That's, that's a mile. This is probably what we really should be using. Save, come back over here. Let's see what that one looks like. Oh my God, now we've got this monstrosity in there. Ugh. You know what? And I move everything around, reroute the board. You know what? I'm gonna just buy a eighth watt resistors. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna do. And kick this problem aside. This ferrite that's going to have to go in here. We're going to have to maybe make some more room for that one. But certainly I'm going to nuke the 10K here. Change, but Put the capacitor here and then we'll be fine. So there we go. Why do I got to clarify that? Okay, let's go. Get rid of that. Get rid of our four. Um, and this is my as built drawing and if I buy some eighth watt 33 ohms and 470s I'll also look around for some ferrites that'll fit nicely in here I'm going to go ahead and change this symbol here because Come on. That's supposed to be a ferrite bead, not a 10 ohm resistor. What are we going to do here? Ferrite bead. Let's put a smaller one on there. That will probably fit better on the drawing. There we go. There we are, our one is gone, delete it. Ferrite bead, it'll be ferrite bead number one because there aren't any other ones on there. Let's go get a footprint. I'm still set to resistors here, okay. So I don't know where the ferrite beads are. So I don't know, they got ferrites in here? EF, it's probably some sort of a, 
Oh, look at that. Well, there's one single footprint for it. I'm not gonna. That's look. Now that's a specific one. Let me see if there are any other. Uh, there's probably just a generic two hold. I could just put the resistor on there that was there now. If you go like this and search for ferrite. Oh, what do we got there? No, 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 no. And that's not right either. You know, I don't actually care. I'm going to just make it a resistor. Oops, preferably through hole. And we're going to put the same thing we had in there before. A seven. No, that's it right there. And you can get away with this provided that, I mean, literally you can, if this part here has its pins numbered the same way as the package. So if I hit Control E, uh, what do we got here? We have two pins, and they're numbered one and two. All right, so I can close this out, save. This should uh, satisfy the needs of the software. When I do this and it finds it, it's adding and remove. It's remove the resistor. Remove R2, R1, R4, and then we're going to replace R4 with this other resistor, which is really the uh, ferrite bead. So I'm going to remove the little 10. Oops. Get that out of there. Come on. And then what did I do with my phone? I deleted it. <laughs> I deleted the ferrite bead when I was trying to leap the 10. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. There we are. Now, the ferrite bead's a little fatter, but the ones that I have lying around aren't that big, so it'll fit in here as long as I give some space. Just go ahead and put... Uh, it's supposed to be readable. There we go. Ferrite bead one. And now we're going to go ahead and say... Uh, D to drag this around. Here we go. Come on. If you grab the end of that track, well, actually, here we are. And then we can kind of like uh, get it to go where we want it to go. And go. come on. Oh, the bead's in backwards. <laughs> there we go. That's why it didn't want to go. There we are. For some reason, I just don't like that at all. Let's go ahead and bring it in like so. Ooh, fancy. All right. The 10K is gone. This no longer is going to be feeding back. The 330 is gone. That's where we want to put our capacitor. Gonna get rid of this little ground. Well, it doesn't need it one there. It's got a through hole right there for crying out loud. Okay. Now we can kind of space a lot of this out a little more if we really want to. The 470. If we up, scroll it up a little bit. to redo the polygon so that the grounds connect. Ferrite beads looking good. Should be fine, although that what's oh that's uh, in the courtyard for the crystal. Uh let's move all this stuff down. I just reroute it. It would be nice to get a capacitor footprint that's a little bit bigger so that I can use the parts that I have. 
Or not. I don't I don't know. What just happened there? This has gotta go. Uh, what the heck? Oh, this is not connected right. This goes here. Just delete it. All right, comvid goes in here, then it goes there. So the only thing R7 does is terminates the output of the VDP. This is screwy now. Well, I can kind of come down and around and hook it up over there. These two signals won't interfere with each other because they're really the same signal anyway. Going into and then back out of the emitter follower. I can put this vertical track on the back of the board anyway, where it probably belongs. And then this one can actually go down here. Get this mess out of here. What is it? I. There we go. Yeah, I brings. Yeah, I'll just delete the whole thing. I'll rerun that track. Let's go ahead and bring this one down here. Okay, so this is going to go... I could just turn these around. Hook it up like that. Now this goes to here, that goes to here. I can turn this around. There. Clean this up. I don't know what the heck. And that then comes over to here and that'll be fine. No big deal. Grab this D and bring it over there. Hit X. And it should continue it, although this track is wider than the other ones. There we go. There we go. So these on the back then are on the back. I'm going to go and run a track like this. Then on the front. Oops, there we go. And settle down. Let's stand it when it doesn't want to go my and then it, come on, stupid thing. Go the other way. We pour the polygons, save everything. So I think it's now routed as built. way so there's the 33 the 470 that's all that's over there we've got a ferrite bead and these guys yep and that should be okay we have a look see at a photo what it might look like now i'm gonna double check to see i'm sure i can find a 390 or a 420 or whatever a puff capacitor that'll fit into that small footprint, even though the ones I have a whole bunch of them that are huge. This should f uh, work out fine. So this is a picture of a resistor because I abused the resistor footprint for this, but I got some room in there that should work, provided that it's long enough. But you can get teeny little ferrite beads that should not be a problem, or I can obviously stand it up if I need. The space, so I'm pretty happy with this. Uh, let's go ahead and flip it over. There should be some unused. There's the ground. These two should not be connected, and that one should not be connected. Okay. That's so far, so good. Uh, 
All right. Yeah, no connect on five, nine, and seven. And let's check that one more time. Here's another website. Five, nine, and seven. Here's another one. What did this one say? Ground fire. Blah, blah, blah. Ground fire. Blah, blah, blah. The gray ones. Five, nine, seven. Five, nine, seven. Five, nine, seven. All the, whatever. These are just flipped over versions of the same thing. And these all say five and nine and seven. Okay. So if we just leave those float, we're fine. Don't need positive voltage on this anyway. And even this one that was the first one to throw itself in my five and nine and seven of the weirdos. Okay, I think we're good. Let's update the revision number. We've long since left zero, which won't even run. So here's revision one. And this is the one with the uh, better power. Five on nine, ground on 18. Not bad. I guess one last thing. We want to make sure that we have two more of these bypass caps for the buffers, right? What do I want to do? I want to annotate. Looks good. So 13 and 12. And we want to say update from the schematic. We should have two of these buggers. Yes. Okay. So they're going to probably go up there. All right. Mm. Great. They're not going to fit. Actually, I could probably get the capacitor in there, but. Oh. Oh, no. I think I'm going to have to move these whole things down. It's not like I don't have any room, but this is just annoying. <sighs> Should be able to just grab, like, everything here. And then unselect what I don't want to move. I okay, shift, click to undo it. Oops. That be it. There we go. All these should still be selected, right? I think that's selected. And unfortunately, none of these vertical tracks on the back. Uh, maybe I want to just take the whole thing. Well, I don't want that much of it. We got all the green lines. Uh, I do not want to select all these red ones. Oops, I just unselected everything. Dang it. I'm also going to need that. I do not want to select these. I don't want the red tracks. No. No, 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 no. 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 No, no, no. So these green lines will just slide down and then I can slip them back up in there. All this junk is selected too. Annoying, annoying, annoying. Turn it off, please. Come on, you jerk. How many pieces of track are in there? I don't know. All right, what about these guys? Turn that off, turn this off. Off, off. Off, 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 off. Get rid of that red track. No, no, 
no. And I probably also selected that thing. Yeah, get rid of that. And don't move the hole. Don't move the revision tag. These may be selected. They don't look selected. All right, so if we need to make sure we hit M now, should be able to move the whole thing. Not too messy. I didn't grab the left resistor sip. This one I missed. It should be okay. Not exactly perfectly lined up but i guess it wasn't before because that one's up a little bit too uh certainly good enough uh what do we got here hit b to report to stop all this stuff from breaking so some of these tracks came apart because they obviously need to go up there do i got enough room for these uh extra caps where did they go they may, might have deleted them while i was clowning around Bring them back in again. Okay, do they fit, please? Wow, they almost don't even fit after all that. All right, let's just stick them up here. Okay. I'm going to get some courtyard complaints, but I don't care. Mm, maybe it'll fit. Change my grid a little bit. Actually, I won't even get any courtyard gripes. Probably. There we go. Put it basically right there. We certainly don't need any. We is when I got the giant pin right there. Of course, this track can't go through there anymore. <laughs> uh, hit D to drag it around. I don't know what happened here. So this is uh, looks pretty crappy. I don't even know what that is for. What are those things? Oh, that's the select line probably for the latch. Yeah. So that we should clean up just move this stuff over here hopefully if we drag this around yeah there you go it'll clean up the track a little bit okay and it goes over there and it wants me to reconnect it so you can select it go to the end and hit d and kind of do one of these moves same with the rest of these hit d on the end of it and it'll let you Move it around and reconnect it to where you want it to go. You can kind of go like that and then grab the... Uh, is, it, is it not wanting to... That's very weird. Well, it's just as easy to redo it like that. We'll do fine. This is too close to these guys, it looks like, anyway. So, we connect this guy. Why is it not wanting to... Usually they just kind of snap on there. I don't know what's going on. With this. I guess it's not doing it because what I'm doing is I'm grabbing the end and I'm hitting D to drag it. If I hit X and click on it, then I can... Uh, uh, yeah, this is what I was expecting D to do. But if I just route a new track, it's fine. Yeah, I don't like it when it bends these around like that. There we go. Some of them more will probably need to be messed with, like this one. Come on. Get some cleaned up.
It's not beautiful, but it will do. These need to be dragged around and cleaned up. And reconnected. All oh, these are going to be all out of whack. That's okay. Pull that up later. So these down here are also going to be messed up. Every one of these will have been moved down. I should be able to just drag them up and reconnect them. That's where they belong. It looks like I didn't uh, deselect that and put it back to where that belongs. For the most part, it should be fine. Looks like D7 is accidentally now connected to ground. We don't want to do that this other track Extra one of these out of nowhere. That's very strange. I wonder if I had two vias right on top of each other before. Okay, well, at this point, this is probably okay down there. These could get a little messy in here. Oh, actually, I moved this down in hole. That should be fine. These all move down. These should be fine. And the DRC should tell us about that. It'll gripe about this because I didn't reconnect it yet. So let's go ahead and run it and assume that's the case. So somebody's too close to something. Where's the arrow? When you double click it, it should zoom in or at least center it. Should be, yeah, there it is. It's right there. So this is what it's crying about. Obviously, we need to get rid of that. Let's go ahead and do this and run it again so nobody's shorting anything out. But the non-connected should be a bunch of things. Yes. Okay. Close. So the only griping it's doing now are these unconnected tracks. I'm going to clean that up and then we'll be in business. All right. So look forward to this on the GitHub. Thanks for watching. See you next time.